Hey guys, Pet1979 here. Just want to show you guys my version 2.0 of the motor mount that I made for the Pelican Catch Mode 110. All right, so this is my latest generation, and I think this one rocks. I mean, this thing is knocked out of the park. So I'll give you guys the dimension and just show you real quick how it is mounted. And I think this is my masterpiece, guys, to be honest. I'll try to make this video quick just to show you guys if you want to replicate it. But I think this is the best option to mount the motor on the Pelican Catch Mode 110. So let me show you guys uh, what I did, all right? So I, I took a piece of uh, three quarter inch subfloor, cut it to dimension, use some four bolts on there to bolt it in place because the fifth one would be covered by this uh, two by six, two by seven. So, and I use four L brackets there. And I also used, um, three deck screws here to just secure even more the uh, the 2x4 on the back and this thing guys is absolutely bomb proof this is rock solid and it's not an issue so if you want to remove it it's not a permanent it's not a permanent um, a modification so you don't have to drill you don't have to damage the kayak you don't have to do anything you just have to screw in the the wood like four Actually, you, you, you're not even touching the kayak. It's just you're using the pre-mounted holes on the kayak for the motor mount that they sell. And the motor mount that they sell is just, for me, it, it's, it's not good because you don't have access to your motor. You can't raise it up the way you can right now. You can't raise it up if you're going to shore, if there's some rock in the river, if you're in shallow waters. You can't do anything. So you're, you're really stuck. And the way it, you're, you're on the back trying to articulated i see you know i saw zofflinger's video where he has an extension so you have to buy a lot of different things i mean my motor my motor and my battery cost me like 200 bucks so 60 bucks for the battery and uh, for lead acid battery brand new by the way uh there was a sm smashing deal on princess auto but i'll talk about that another time and the motor like 150 bucks so you know, 200 and something dollars and that's it. That's all I had to spend. Maybe five bucks for the hardware that I bought, but that's it. So let me give you guys the dimensions and the things that I've been using for it. So for the bolts, I've been using M8 bolts. So these things fit just perfect. And you need to use M8. You can use M6 if you, if you want to go a little bit smaller, but I use M8 because uh, the holes on the bottom of the for the motor mounts the spacing, there's, there's enough room to put a washer on there. Let me show you guys the washer that I use on the bottom. I used two different size washer because I didn't know which one was gonna fit. So here are the washers. The part number on the washer at the Home Depot is 3206. And the other one, which you don't need really, is 3207. So you don't actually need it. Need it. You just need the small one, but the small one even uh, I think this one, I didn't use any washer because the hole, like I said, are not center, centered. And if you're using the washer, it's going to raise up on one side and it's going to rub on the kayak. And when you press it, you torque it down, it's just going to dig in to the kayak and it's just going to damage the kayak like that. So that's why I thought, you know, it was kind of unfortunate that the holes were not all centered. So that's quality control, I guess. But... Yeah, the holes are not, are not all centered on there, so. But the size of the washer, if I did not mention that, uh, where did I put my measuring tape? Here it is. So the size of the washer, if I didn't mention it, is three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of, one, of an inch for the bottom washers, if I did not mention it, so right there. Three quarters of an inch. I'll show you guys the hardware now for uh, the, uh, the L bracket. So the L brackets are one and a half inch. And they get the two holes in it. So, uh, yeah, I use four of them. So you guys can see this is baller. So I'll give you guys a dimension for the uh, three-quarter inch subfloor that I use. So don't mind the cat. Doesn't It's not part of the dimension. So, so yeah, guys, eight inches over here on uh, lengthwise, eight inches. It's perfect. You, you, you could go a little bit more, but now you're starting to get at an angle. And it's starting to go that way. So... Eight inches for me was perfect. And lengthwise, uh, you're gonna have to maybe sand a little bit or just cut it a tad bit shorter, but I wanna leave as much wood as I can. So 
This is 11 and 3 quarters, guys. 11 inch and 3 quarters uh, for that piece of wood. So you could use also a 2 by 8 or something that would fit there perfect also. So now you would need the, uh, the longer, uh, the 50 size, uh, 50 millimeter, I think, size uh, bolts on there because if you're going uh, to raise it up, but I put the three a quarter uh, inch plywood because it would just fit and it would just raise it up enough to put my uh, two by six here or two by seven and it would just be like perfect for that. So the length of the two by seven or you could go two by eight is about 21 and a quarter. So 21 and a quarter inch. So that's just the perfect length to arrive to put the two by four just smash with just the side of the hole there. That was just perfect, guys. So the two by four now is the two by four. You could go a, sm a tad bit smaller, but this is 43 and a half, 43 and a half inches. So hopefully that's pretty much all the dimensions that you need. So the yeah, the, this piece of two by six is actually like something that's been uh, home milled or done by a milling machine in wood. So. Uh, this is like, uh, you know, raw wood or something. So uh, this is seven inches. But you can also, you know, if I'm looking on the bolts here, you can also go eight inches like easy. You could go eight. So two by eight would just fit perfect easy, guys. So yeah, let me show you guys how it is in the kayak when I'm sitting down and when I'm accessing the motor, right? Let me show you guys over here real quick. Let me put you guys there, yeah. right about here. All right, so now when I'm accessing the motor, when I'm sitting down, I have easy access to the motor and I can lower it and raise it up. That easy, guys. No fuss, no muss. Uh, just uh, one thing that uh, you might lose is the right side paddle holder. So you're going to have to put your paddle on the left side, but your rod holder is still good. So you still got access to both your rod holders. And a little bonus, guys, you could also fit a milk crate back here. So you could still fit your mi milk crate back there. So <laughs> how cool is that? Uh, pretty cool, right, guys? So you could do, also use the 2x4 to put some... A rod holder is on the 2x4 and you could use it like that. But you're losing a little bit of space in the rear, but not much. Not much, guys. But for the access, guys, the access, let me see if you guys can see good on the back. Yeah, you can see good on the back, but I'll scoot you back a little bit. So, like so. But yeah, guys, look. On the rear here, if you have the, the motor mount, the Pelican cells, which is expensive, by the way, you can't reach. Look, I'm 5'11", and I can't even reach on the back. F of course, to just manipulate the motor, but look at my arm, how it is. So you need to have the booster on when you're using the throttle, the throttle motor, and you need an, an extension for it. And you need to be on the side like that to be able to go on the water. So, But still, you don't have access. Right here, I have access to my... Uh, to my motor to raise it up because I'm in a river system where there's a lot of rocks and shallow waters. Uh, <laughs> if I don't want to destroy my motor and be out the door like 150 bucks every like two weeks that I need to pay to replace my motor every time, well, this is the way to go. Yeah, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, <laughs> second generation motor mount from my uh, Pelican Catch Mode 110. So if you did, give it a thumbs up. That, was, that would be appreciated greatly. And if you decide to make this modification, just send me some pictures, all right? I want, I want to do a video showing guys that you did that, that exact modification. And I want to show, you, uh, show everybody that, you know, this is a good design. So the only thing that remains is to test it on the water. Since I've moved the center of gravity a little bit, eight inch backwards, I should be, uh, I should have a little bit more easier time turning on both sides and it should be like money. But you know, guys, having a motor and not paddling is just, mwah. I mean, it's just, mwah. it's just perfect, guys. Not having to paddle is just, it's just wonderful. And look, $200. And how much is it for a pedal drive system on a kayak with a, uh, with a, a propeller on the back? I mean, a propeller style pedal, a pedal drive. 
it costs you double the price. So the kayak itself, if you let's say go with an Old Town PDL, it's like 1600 bucks. And if you go uh, with, with just the regular Old Town 106 or something, and you go with the PDL version, uh, the, the regular version is gonna be 1600 bucks. And the PDL version is gonna be 3000 in Canada. So 3000 bucks. So $1,500 for a set of pedal, yeah, a pedal ride that's mechanical. And I get a motor for 150 bucks with a battery for like 60 bucks. So what the hell? I mean, uh, it, just, it just baffles me. But you know what? There is some places like Princess Auto that imports pedal drive kayak from China for a thousand dollars, a thousand ninety nine bucks or something. It's a thousand dollars for a pedal drive kayak. I mean, this is where it shows that where are they making their money? I think they're making money in the drive because damn, I mean, if they can bring it from China and have it for like a thousand bucks for the entire kayak, the kayak, the pedal drive, everything. For a thousand bucks, maybe that that's a that's a uh, subject for another video. But yeah, guys, I think pedal drivers are so expensive, and this is why. Like the car cost me six hundred bucks, uh, six ninety nine. So with taxes, like a thousand bucks, I have a motor driven kayak on the water to go fishing. So mwah, money. So let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. If you have anything else that you want to uh, to ask me that I might have missed that you want uh, more details on the dimension how I did it and stuff like that uh, just I'm just gonna give you guys a quick tip all right if you're drilling on the bottom of the uh, to drill the holes for to pull to place the bolts on the bottom uh, here just start with one hole right just align it up drill one hole then screw a bolt in it drill a second hole on the opposite sides you can go cross diagonal uh, as long as that on the opposite side just drill a hole on the opposite sides from the bottom while you're having your uh, your screw and your nuts and bolts tight on the first hole so that way it's going to be not moving then when you drill the second one and you place it in there the other two are going to be like easy you won't have to do anything you won't have to hold the board in place so start by drilling one hole place your nut and bolt and washers and just tighten it up not too much just just enough that it's snug and it stays in there drill the second one put a second nuts and bolts and then the other two you just drill and then afterwards you drop your your bolts on each one so easy peasy to do guys there's nothing to it so anybody can do it if you you're not mechanically inclined or if you're not DIY if you're not proficient with tools just ask somebody to do it for you it takes literally like less than an hour to make it's it's super simple it's just two cuts so you have to do one cut here one cut here just cut that one to length and cut that one to length and you're in business after that is just you know using a drill and or an impact and just screwing things uh, together so putting things together so I think this is the best system so far and I can't wait to go on the water. The first gen that I did was okay. Uh, <coughs> the tolerances were a little sloppy for, the, uh, for the, uh, the rear because I had so many angles to cut and stuff. But with this one, it's just super simple, straight angles that you just cut like, you know, <laughs> all you have to do is measure, cut straight. You don't have to do any chamfer, any cornerings, any anything to to modify on the rear tank well so i think this is that that literally took me no time at all to make guys and it's just it's just money all right let me know in the comments what you think give it a thumbs up if you uh, like the video and i'll catch you guys on the next one